A cold front pushes into the central U.S. along with it some cooler air flowing in from Canada. But way up there in the north you can see a dirty appearance to the clouds. And that is wildfire smoke. And I hate to say it, but we're going to see more of that because there are a lot of fires burning from central Saskatchewan up to northern Alberta and even in the Northwest Territories, putting out these smoke plumes visible on the website firesmoke.ca. Some of those plumes extend all the way to the Arctic islands. Yeah, that's definitely not good news. Some of that smoke will be making it south with that northerly flow that we're going to see over the next few days. So we will see some smoke in parts of the Midwest and the central and southern plains. And this shows you how bad it is. This is from the Terra satellite earlier this afternoon. And there's the smoke all the way from the Northwest Territories down into Alberta. North is that way. So some of that smoke all the way up to Copper Mine down towards Yellowknife right there and on into Alberta. So it's quite a mess. And some of that is coming south. Looking pretty good in the Midwest for this afternoon, but Monday night, a much different story. We had a derecho develop in Iowa and sweep across much of Illinois, producing extensive wind damage and numerous tornadoes. This is the radar imagery from that night as the storms rolled into Chicago. Tornado warnings measuring over 100 miles in length. Continuous tornado warnings across all of Chicago. And that might be unprecedented. Let's take a look at that damage. According to the official SPC plots, numerous reports of high winds, as many as 700 reports all through this area in blue. Only 14 tornado reports, but there are estimates that there were quite a few more. This is the internal NOAA damage assessment system showing the reports of the storm surveys so far. Looks like EF0 to EF2 damage, mostly in southern and central Chicago. The heaviest damage, that's going to be right down there south of Joliet. And numerous other tornado tracks indicated from Aurora and Joliet into parts of western and southern Chicago. And I am going to open up that private video that we had on Monday for the supporters. I'm going to set that so everybody can see it. So feel free to take a look at that if you're interested in the events of Monday night. Okay, let's head into today's weather. We have a strong Canadian front moving into the Midwest states and down into the Southern Plains, already making it into Dallas, Abilene, and Lubbock. Temperatures behind that front rather mild, looking at 70s up north and 80s through the Central Plains and the Corn Belt. But numerous showers and storms all the way along the length of that front, all the way down to Texas, and then we pick up some upslope flow conditions, coupling with that monsoon moisture producing numerous showers and storms, especially in the Rockies, and we're going to see even more of that develop in New Mexico as this front slows down over the next couple of days, and we get that continued moist easterly flow into the Sacramento and Sangre de Cristo Mountains. All right, just taking a quick look elsewhere out there in the Pacific. There's the Pacific High, 10, 22 millibars, very weak. And it's being broken down by this Gulf of Alaska system. Atmospheric river focused on southeastern Alaska right there. Temperatures rather cool in the 50s, plenty of rain. And we do have flood advisories and flood watches from Juneau up to Haines. Across Canada itself, continued very warm weather supporting that wildfire activity. Temperatures almost 90 degrees. In fact, it is 90 degrees in the Northwest Territories, but it has cooled down from Inuvik out to Cambridge Bay. Looking at eastern Canada, continued on the mild side. Going into the Maritimes, we do have heat advisories and heat warnings continuing for Nova Scotia and Prince Edward Island temperatures there in the mid-80s. In the northeastern U.S., you can see the telltale indicators of the warm conveyor belt. Moisture coming up from the Gulf all the way into the northeastern U.S. We have one last day of 100-degree temperatures forecast for Washington, D.C. 
One last day of 91 degree temperatures at Boston, then things will be cooling down. Heat advisories all down the East Coast, all the way from Canada, right down towards Charleston, South Carolina. Yesterday, Washington National and Baltimore, Washington National right here, they both reached 104, tying a daily record from 1988 at both places. LaGuardia Airport in New York, they reached 97 degrees, tying a daily record there. But we have storms moving in. There they are on the radar mosaic. Plenty of storms out there in Massachusetts, Connecticut, then a separate line along the true cold front from about State College down to around Cincinnati. A metric ton of thunderstorms all across the southeastern U.S. Yeah, this would be a rough day to be flying into Atlanta. We've got heat advisories all the way from the coastal Carolinas up to Virginia. Heat index is there about 108. At Key West yesterday, we had an overnight low of 85 degrees. West Palm Beach, their overnight low yesterday was 82. Both of those were records, and today we are expecting heat advisories around Miami of 110. A separate heat advisory in Mississippi, western Alabama, out there into Arkansas, Louisiana, and the Arklatex. Heat index is there about 110. Let's take a look at the satellite imagery. And it's pretty similar to the radar, just dominated by all the cells, the anvils, the convective debris. And uh, there's our more organized system along the front out there in Texas. There's a closer look at that activity. It looked like storms got going around Greenville and McKinney. And they're embedded in some other convective debris from last night. And... Yeah, we're talking about this. That's the new convection. Here's the old convective debris. That's going to be mid and upper level clouds. That's going to be mostly cirrus, the so-called high cloud number three that you see on synoptic reports. And there's the new convection all the way from mineral wells out to Big Springs and Hobbs. Yesterday, Amarillo did reach 105 for a high temperature, and that broke a record. Very nice weather across the central and northern plains. Some of that wildfire smoke. That's probably from Oregon working into Montana. And numerous upslope flow thunderstorms all the way from Colorado into Wyoming and Montana. There is a slight risk of severe storms in northeastern Colorado right there. And that's going to be mostly for wind and hail. And I'll just leave that risk area on the southwestern chart. You can see that they're under a general thunderstorm risk area, so not really any severe weather expected until you get out towards the high plains. Numerous storms along the Mogollon Rim up on up into eastern Nevada. Still have an active monsoon pattern. And we're going to see that ramp up as we go into the weekend and early next week down in the lower deserts of Arizona, as well as along the Mogollon Rim. So if you take a look at this chart, you should be able to pick out where that upper level high is. You might notice a bit of rotation in the large scale field. Definitely flow from left to right up to the north. Down in Arizona, it's a little bit more indeterminate, but we can see a kind of a very weak southeasterly flow through here. So you kind of see what's going on right there. That's going to be a upper level high. That's centered across the Four Corners area, and that's going to shift westward over the next few days. And that's going to allow northeasterly flow into Arizona, and that tends to be associated with a heightened risk of severe weather in Phoenix. So we're going to be looking for that as we get into that monsoon pattern. Here's another look at that upper level high, looking at the 500 millibar chart. It is centered across northwestern New Mexico and the Four Corners area. You can see that southeasterly flow across Arizona itself. And then going into the weekend, you can see things change. There's the northeasterly flow, the center of the high over Nevada as it shifts to the west. As we move west into the north, the San Joaquin Valley has cooled down a bit, looking at lower to mid-90s this afternoon. 95 at Reno, and as we go north, we do get into some hotter temperatures, 102 at Pendleton. And let's see, other 100s, we've got 102 at Walla Walla and 100 at Ontario. So 
If you think that's bad, it's going to get much worse going into next week. We're going to cover that shortly. Looking for highs well up into the 100s, possibly near 110 in some areas. And we do have a couple of wildfires going already. One is in the Cascades. I think that is going to be Crater Lake right there, so just north of Crater Lake. This other one, that's going to be in the coastal range east of Arcata. What's going on in the tropics? Looks like nothing. So that's somewhat of a blessing. Let's take a look at the imagery for the moisture and IVT in the Gulf and in the Caribbean. And this is basically indicating some easterly waves moving through the flow, one right there into Guatemala and Nicaragua. Here comes another one. Some of the moisture associated with those easterly waves will couple with that deep southerly flow into Texas later next week. Then we have this other surge that will also be coming up for later next week. That will affect parts of the eastern U.S. arriving sometime around next Thursday or Friday. Here's our detrimental effects chart showing where conditions are unfavorable for tropical cyclones. The blue indicates excessive bulk shear in the mid-levels of the atmosphere. The red indicates dry conditions in the atmospheric column, less than 40% relative humidity in the middle troposphere. And you can see that shear is a big problem all through the typical storm track regions. And only by late next week, yeah, let's see, there's a dry surge right there. Only by later next week does that start clearing out. We start to get some improving conditions opening up. I probably need a different sector for the Cape Verde area, but this will give you an idea of what's going on. Okay. And let's cover that surface forecast. This is where I try to cover your area, and it is pretty tough because we got so much to cover, so much weather. So I'll try to do my best here. Polar front moving into the Appalachians and into Arkansas and Texas. Convective complex around DFW, Texarkana, Waco. We already saw a little bit of that on the satellite imagery. And numerous showers and storms breaking out on the higher terrain. That's going to be that monsoon moisture which has flowed into the Intermountain and Rocky Mountain region. Then going into tomorrow, we get to our convective minima. And then by afternoon as things start heating up, the polar front sags a little bit further south down into the Interstate 40 corridor, maybe Interstate 20 down to Interstate 10 in Texas. We do have a marginal risk for severe storms in the eastern two-thirds of North Carolina, talking about this area right there. That's near that warm front, this Bear Clinic low, and that's going to be mostly for low-end chances of wind damage. Marginal risk up and down the central high plains right in this area here, down to Clayton, Raton, and on up towards... North Platte, Scotts Bluff, Rapid City could see wind and hail being a factor there. Upslope flow in New Mexico, that tends to be very stormy this time of year. So we're expecting redevelopment on the Sacramento Mountains and the Sangre de Cristos, places like Ruidoso, Klein's Corner, Las Vegas, Santa Fe could see thunderstorms. There is a Slight risk of excessive rainfall issued by the Weather Prediction Center. That's going to be a multi-day event, Thursday and Friday. And, of course, rain problems, as I mentioned, out there in North Carolina. They're looking for maybe some isolated 5 to 6-inch amounts, but most areas will get 2 to 4. Cool air filtering into the central plains, looking at highs only in the 80s across this area right here. And numerous storms along and south of that front due to the presence of boundaries and rich precipitable waters 2 to 2.5 inches. So very tropical. And there they are. Storms breaking out once again out in the western regions, the Continental Divide, the Intermountain region, and the Mogollon Rim as well into southeastern Arizona. Going into the overnight hours into Friday, looking for a marginal risk of severe storms in the northern high plains around this Bear Clinic low. Western Nebraska, western South Dakota under the gun for that. And an upper level trough, not really shown here, but it will appear on the upper level charts, shearing off and kind of wandering around parts of the Corn Belt over the next several days. And I'm probably doing a disservice if I don't show that. But there's that troughing right there. This is going to be on Saturday. This is mostly an upper-level feature. 
but you can see it shearing off right there over Omaha for Sunday and just kind of wandering around. This will be associated with some cooler upper level temperatures and an increased risk of thunderstorms and showers as it wanders around Kansas, Missouri, Iowa, and then gradually gets absorbed by the prevailing northwesterly flow and lifted into the Great Lakes region for late next week. So going back to the maps, another day of thunderstorms in the western U.S., more storms in the southeast. Then we go into Saturday. It's going to be a very hot one in the southwestern U.S. Phoenix reaching 114. That's going to be the hottest day in the forecast. Vegas will be 113 all weekend. And the heat will be ramping up in the northwestern U.S. Widespread mid-100s. Then we go into Sunday. This is where we have a really hot day in the northwestern U.S., looking for 105 at Spokane. The all-time high there is 109. We're looking for 108 at Grangeville. Spokane, by the way, right there. And Boise, looking for 107 with 107 at OMAC. That upper-level trough over Iowa shears off, as we mentioned, becomes an upper-level low. You can see the showers Right around that trough, you can see a reflection of that trough in upper level low in the thickness field right there. A little bit of uh, elongation of those thickness contours in red. Monsoon pattern really starts gearing up in Arizona, looking for 1.5 to 2 inch precipitable waters in southwestern Arizona. And remember, we have that northeasterly flow off the rim, so any storms that get going could move into the Phoenix area. And I do wonder about Prescott. Kind of a similar setup, but I don't really know the patterns in Prescott quite as well. Any viewers know about that, feel free to post. And I'll show you that precipitable water. Yeah, out there in the southeastern U.S., it's just over 1.5, just tons of it. So not much to talk about there. It's going to concentrate along that boundary. But Arizona, look at how the values come up here going into late weekend. Here's Friday, here's Saturday, and then Sunday. So picking up quite a bit, up to 1.5 to 2 inch amounts in the southwestern deserts and hanging on well into midweek. So we are getting into an active monsoon pattern, and this is typically what we expect for this time of year in the lower deserts. Out in the eastern U.S., you have vast amounts of moisture, 2 to 2.5 inches, so plenty of opportunities for rain wherever we find a boundary. Then we go into Monday. You can see thermal troughing out there in California. They will be seeing the heat once again, widespread 100s on Monday, getting worse through early next week. Another hot day, but it starts improving a little bit on Monday. You can see the thickness gradient start to increase out here, indicating stronger westerlies working into the region. As we go into Tuesday, here's the weather map for then. Yeah, continued rain along and east of the Mississippi River. Looking for continued hot conditions in the San Joaquin Valley, 105 at Sacramento, 108 at Fresno, and possibly some heat building into the southeastern U.S., the subtropical high kind of nosing in, producing some height increases, but continued southerly flow throughout the troposphere. Weak upper level low meanders into, let's say, maybe northwestern Missouri, and it will gradually open up as we get into midweek and carry most of the rain up into the Midwest. Anyway, yeah, so there goes the rain, looking a little bit drier in parts of the central U.S. Then we have this active Pacific system into late next week. And with the very last chart, it appears the southwest monsoon is still active all the way through the 27th. And that's all for this episode of Forecast Lab. Are we running a little bit long on those analyses and forecasts? Let me know. Somehow I suspect those should run 10 minutes and not 20 minutes. We went into some rather extensive detail on those things, and I'm not sure if that's boring you all or what. But yeah, post in, in the comments. Let me know. Thank you to John Hillary for the contribution. He sent in a check to help support the program going above and beyond. And I will be taking my summer break next week so I can catch up with family and work. Looks like a quiet period, but, you know, we will do our Friday show this week, and then I will return on Monday, the 29th. Hope you all have a great Wednesday evening and Thursday, and we'll see you back here on Friday. Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>